him enough for that, for all that he does for <coughs> his songs and in the spirit in which that they're sung in, and, and to feel his presence. I mean, that, you know, I, that's what makes love and coming to church so great, isn't it? Is to feel the presence of the Lord. That's, that's what it's all about, is coming and, and feasting, feasting upon the Lord, feasting upon what he's what he's done for us. The only, the only thing that I'm always having a hard time trying to figure out is that we have some of the most talented singers, I believe, in this church. I mean, most talented singers. And we've got microphones all over this stage. You can't hardly get one of them to pick one of them up. And I can't figure that out. Use the microphones. We want to hear you even better. I mean, we can hear you good. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's been beautiful. But well, let's, let's hear you even better. You know, let's, uh, let's use what we have. Because the Lord has blessed us with. But we're thankful today that you're here and that you've made it your choice to be here. Uh, we're all here for, uh, I hope, for one specific reason. And that's to receive something from the Lord. And that's, that's what we need to come in, in unity of, is to come uh, expecting things. And I, I believe that some have come this morning already expecting, and believe me, I believe some have already received. They, they come expecting a blessing from the Lord, and, and some have already received it. So if, if we come expecting from, something from the Lord, asking of Him, and, and, and desiring it, and not only that, but, but believing it, and knowing it, not doubting it, not, not just wondering, not, I wonder if the Lord's going to show up today. Not just come in here and think, hey, he's going to be here today. He's going to be here today because he wants, he so desirously wants to bless his children. He does. He wants to bless us. He wants to give us uh, his great spirit and that overwhelming feeling of, of being one of his children. Of that confirmation. Because believe me, in this world, we, at times we need confirmation, don't we? When we're out walking in this world and we're struggling at times and things get heavy and, and life weighs upon us and, and sometimes we just wonder if we even look out at our families and we wonder, where are they going? What are they doing? What, Lord, what, what's ever going to happen to them? And that can be tiresome. That can be wearisome. We've got to say, Lord, just, just come and bless me. Come and bless me. You know, I, I remember hearing a, an account on a tape that I listened one time to my grandfather. Uh, Bill England, he used to pastor here uh, several years ago, most of you know him. But I remember listening to this tape, and, and it, whenever he was struggling with uh, coming to his calling to preach, and I remember he said many times that he would that he would go back out into some wooded area somewhere, and he would go back to this little uh, stump area, and, it, and he'd look over the stump, and there was water there, and he would look over it, and he would look into it, and, and and, you know, because if you're, if you're not doing what the Lord wants you to do, believe me, you're going to go through some dry times. You're, you're going to go through some, some difficult situations because in order to be blessed of the Lord, you have to live by what He says. You have to do by what He uh, commands you to do. And if it's to preach, you need to preach. If it's to teach, you need to teach. If it's to sing, you need to sing. But whatever it is that the Lord instructs you to do, that is what you need to do. But I remember as he would uh, uh, talk about this occurrence in his life, that he would look over that and, and he had been through a dry spell because he knew what he was supposed to do. And he would just say, Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. And, and he, he would say that the Lord came and he blessed him. And then he went on his way and, and he still didn't give his heart over to the Lord and say that I'll go ahead and preach. I'll do what you told me to do. He said he had to go back out to that stump again. And he looked over it and he said, Lord, I need a blessing. I need a blessing. We need a blessing, my friend, whenever we're serving the Lord. And, and when times get dry, times get hard, but we've got to look at ourselves also. Sometimes it's why maybe the times get hard and why the dry times come. It's not maybe always just because of the world, because of the devil. It may be because of us. Maybe we're not looking at exactly what we should be doing, what we need to be doing. He said he looked over that stump again into that water and he said, the Lord gave him a blessing. He asked for a blessing. Lord, I need you to bless me looked over that and the Lord blessed him. I think he said that. He repeated that about three times of that. But he said the third time that he went back and he needed a blessing. He asked the Lord to show him a blessing. He said he looked over that stump and he looked into that water. You know what he said he saw? He saw, he saw fire. He saw fire down in that water. He knew what he needed to do. 
He knew that what he was doing was wrong. It was going contrary to the word, contrary to what God wanted him to do. The Lord was calling him to preach, and he wanted the blessings of God, but he didn't want to acknowledge. He didn't want to see exactly what it was that he needed to do. But when the Lord showed him that, boy, I tell you, sometimes the Lord has to get drastic with us. You know that? Sometimes he's got to really get right now serious with us before we will open up our hearts and open up our eyes and say, okay, Lord, it will be your way. My way is just not cutting it. My way is not, I'm not receiving what I need from you. I'm finally ready to relinquish everything to you. And that's what it's going to take, my friend. If we're going to be blessed in any way of the Lord, he may come along every once in a while when we, as, as my grandfather did, Lord, I need a blessing, I need an assurance. And maybe he was right there and he did bless him. But there came also a time where he showed him, you need to get serious. You need to get serious. And I believe the Lord comes along in all of our lives at times. And he lets us go on for a little while. lets us go on. And, and we get a little cold and we get a little dry sometimes. And, and we wonder, you know, Lord, where, where's that blessing at? Where's, it, where's that blessing that I need? But maybe also he said, there are some things that you need to do. Some things that we need to do. And we all know that, don't we? We all know that there are things that we need to do in this life concerning our relationship with Jesus, every single one of us. You know, he, you, have to, uh, you have to reach for it. You have to search it out sometimes. You have to be willing to accept what it is that the Lord has told us to do and, and be willing to move forward with that. And, and I'm thankful to be able to say that, and I'm sure a lot of you today are thankful to say that I'm glad Brother Bill went forward with what the Lord showed him that he had to do. That he was thankful that he announced and that he accepted that call to preach because of the hearts. And that's what I want us to understand of, of who that we can affect in this life. As we can, as you know, my grandfather, and, and sure, and I, I'm not trying to brag upon him or in any way because this is all about Jesus, my friend. It's all about bragging upon our Lord, about lifting him up. But when we lift him up, no matter who that we are, whether it's my grandfather, whether it's you, my friend, Whenever we lift him up, we draw all men unto him. That's where they're going to get saved. That's where they're going to find what they really need in this life. I was talking with a young man just last night. Last night on his way, taking him home. And he, uh, what, a, what a privilege that it was to hear of his conversion experience. A, a young man that's getting ready to go into the Navy in, in just a few months. But talked about the... The change that happened in his life. Well, that day that he got saved. Boy, I tell you, I'd love to hear somebody when they got something, when they got saved. And he said, boy, he said, I couldn't believe how I felt. He said, everything lifted off of me. This is a young man, probably 18, 19 years old. Everything lifted off of him. And he said, I, I couldn't believe that I could feel that good. Well, I tell you, that's, that's what we need to remember. That's, let's not forget our conversion. Let's not forget that time that God came in and removed sin from our life and took that heavy burden off of us and lifted that from us. Let us remember that time whenever we felt like we could float away to heaven right then. And my friend, if we haven't ever experienced that, you know what? The Lord wants us to. He wants us to have that, but we're going to have to get there by how? By living a close life to the Lord. It was good hearing that from his mouth. Young man. I you, I love listening to young people talk. I love it whenever they're passionate. I love listening to anybody talk whenever they're passionate about the Lord. After I got him home, we sat out there and probably talked for another 20 or 30 minutes. Got home, I never did tell them, but they kept saying, Why in the world took you so long? Why took you so long? I thought, hey, I just enjoyed it. We just enjoyed our time talking about the Lord. I tell you, when you get to talking about him, guess what? Time don't matter. Now, I've had conversations with people before that I, if I had, a, if I wore a watch, I'd be looking at it all the time. Is this about over? Is this about done? Uh, this is nothing really concerning. This is just kind of wear, wearing me out. But I say, you get to talk about the Lord, time just kind of evaporates. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter where your next appointment is. If you're doing what you need to do, do it. Don't worry about time. It's all in his hands anyway. And today, we're going to talk about us. We're going to talk about all of us, every single one of us, because we are either of one or we are the other. We are, we are called one thing or we're called something else. And there's a lot of words, but, but the, what we're 
we're going to read today, uh, those of you that would probably hear us uh, or watch what we would talk a little bit about on Facebook or something with some people, it just seemed like it just st stayed with us. But uh, uh, we're either one of two things today. We're either wheat or we're tares. We're either wheat or we're tares. And the Bible has something to say about wheat, and it has something to say about tares. And we're glad to say that there's something that is good to say about the wheat. Uh, that's what you want to be, by the way. You, you want to be a, a good, beautiful stock of wheat for our Lord that would bring honor to Him. But, you know, we also have to realize that in this world that there are tares. You know what tares are? Tares are weeds. Tares are things that choke the wheat at times if, if, it, if it gets overwhelming. If it gets to be too much, they are, they are uh, not good for a whole lot. I know a lot of you like this stuff, and I tell you, as far as I'm concerned, it's weeds. But you can pick it up on the side of the road, I guess. It's called poke, <laughs> greens, or something like this. I, that, believe me, that, I don't know what you got to have to do with that, but I have nothing good to do with that stuff. <laughs> you pour vinegar or bacon grease or whatever it is on it, it's just the most delicious thing. What are you talking about? That's weeds. Uh, I'm not going to put it in the same category as tares for you this morning, but I tell you, as far as I'm concerned, it ain't a whole lot better, but, but anyway. <laughs> I'm going to have you turn to the uh, 13th chapter of Matthew. And I want us to see here what, what our Lord says about the wheat and the tares. And how that, what, because see, we're one or the other, my friend. That's what I want us to understand, that, that it, it, there's no way that, you know, even has scientists today, they can take things and they can... Uh, they can cross, uh, uh, analyze these things, or however, whatever word you want to use. They can cross breed, or however, different strands of things. And, and I, I don't know if I've ever seen them cross uh, a strand of wheat with the uh, with some tares and come up with something in between. But uh, even if they have, guess what? There is no such thing. You're, you're either you're either something that is glorifying the Lord, or you're something that is weighing uh, someone else down. Or you're causing destruction to something, and most importantly, you're causing destruction to yourself. If you're a tear, if you're something that is not profitable for the Lord, something that is not glorious for Him. We're going to begin reading in that 24th verse of uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter. It says, And another prayer will put He forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the house of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, dost thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Without them that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Go ye gather, go ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat all into my barn. And then skip on down to the 37th verse, and this is where Jesus gives the the understanding of the parable that he just said. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. So we have a pretty much distinction here that there is a wide, a, a wide uh, division between what wheat is and what tares are. But we, at the same time, knowing of, of the fate of the wheat as also the fate of the tares, we see that there was also a problem because whenever it grew up together, it kind of uh, uh, acted in, in ways of maybe trying to be a little bit like the wheat. Uh, it, it kind of grew up in a way that uh, we try to mock it, I guess you would say. It, 
I, I guess maybe the word that, that we would use it, and that, that had been used was a, a hypocrite, a hypocrisy. Uh, those that would be uh, contrary to exactly what it was that God had uh, wanted in his church. We see here that, that he allowed these to come and to grow together because he didn't want the harmful things to happen to the weak. And I want us to know today that, that as we, we think about the tares and, and we think about sometimes how uh, we can get off track and we can uh, maybe not also always be exactly what we need to be, that, that we have to realize that, that the tares are here for a purpose and a reason, that they've been here for a reason to begin with. And, and it's sad to look at it and to say that how the Lord described what the tares were here for and their purpose and reason, they came to destroy they were sown by the, by the devil. They were brought here by the one that was to cause uh, problems and things in this life. And we know that they are out of this world. And Because, see, that's what I want us to see. That there's either good or that there's evil out of this world. And, and sometimes, you know, evil can be masked uh, very cautiously. Uh, I believe the Bible tells us that at times the devil can even uh, uh, can change himself to look like an angel of light. At times that, that he can come in and he can deceive us. He can allow us sometimes to be led into the wrong ways and into the wrong paths. And that is a lot of times what happens uh, in our churches today. Sometimes, you know, where the tares would come up. And if they would come up and they would the choke out the wheat. And then that's where you wind up with these churches that are, are full of themselves. And they're more concerned about themselves and not worried about lifting up and glorifying God. They're more worried about living by their own lives, living by their own thoughts. But my friends, you know what it's about? It's about serving God. It's about lifting Him up. Now, He said to leave Him right there because there's a time and a place for everything. And believe me, my friends, there is a time and a place for everything. He says there's going to be a time coming very soon, very, very soon, I believe, that's going to be time for the tares to be gathered up. Oh, my friend, it's, it's so important that we realize uh, how that we stand with the Lord and who it is that we are serving Him and that we are serving Him in, in everything that we can do and in every way that we possibly can, can stay close to him because, uh, my friend, as, as we can say and as we have thought, you know, we, we're, our desire and our hope is that if there are terrors in our midst, if there are those that, that are uh, contrary to the word of God, that are doing wrong, that, that are lost, that are sinners, that are, are, are living a life that is pleasing upon themselves, that they would be rather, that they would be able to be changed and turned into something glorious that would bring honor to God. And that would be to be changed, and that can only be done by Him, is to be changed from that tear into that great wheat that can bring, bring honor and glory into the Lord. We see here, over in the 12th chapter of John, here when Jesus is making His, uh, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, What it is that he had to say about, about what he was and about what he came forth for. But then what had to happen, what had to take place in order for what needed to be done, what needed to be glorified, what needed to be lifted up, had to be done. It had to take place. He says here beginning in the 23rd verse of that 12th chapter of John he says, and Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. When we see here that, that Jesus being the, the, if we could put it this way, the ultimate, the, the ultimate, and the, the greatest piece of wheat that could ever be, the most perfect strand that ever, ever possibly could be. Even him himself knew uh, of what his fate was, knew what it was 
that he needed to go out and to do. And I believe that as us, as, as we have in this world, we, we need to be busy about the Father's business and we need to be agonizing within ourselves. Lord, what it is that, that, that you want me to do? Jesus knew that his time was short. He knew what was coming in his life. Why? Because he stayed close to the Father. Because he knew what his end was. He knew what his whole purpose was. And I believe that in our life, that if we will open up ourselves, and if we will clear away the things of this world, because we have to do that. Isn't that what the gospel just told us right here? That we have to let go of the things of this world. We have to eliminate them from our life. We have to be more compassionate towards the world. But at the same time, we have to be willing to let go of the material things of this world. That is what he's told us here. So he that loveth this, his life shall lose it. This, this life, this, this flesh, this living in here, if, if, if we love this, that my friends, where is, the, where is the love of the Father in? Where is it at in our life? If we keep, if we keep a hold of this place, if we allow it to be our our ruler, if we allow it to be our our, our guidance out into life, we're going to miss exactly what it is that the Lord would have for us to do. If we don't allow ourselves to look beyond what it is that that we desire and, and look into what. Our Father was for us in our life. Because that's what he said here. He also said that he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now, he's not saying that, that we have to hate this life. But what he is saying is that we have to be willing to say that this life isn't what defines me. This, this place isn't what makes me who that I am. It's not about this flesh that I abide in anymore. It, it's about the, the spiritual side of life. And when we are willing to, to allow that to rule and reign in our life and, and allow Christ to come in, uh, because here, what well, was the question that, that the Lord uh, even asked of himself? Uh, he asked of his father. He said, now is my soul troubled? <coughs> Now is his soul troubled, and what shall I say? You know, even, even Jesus battled a little bit with this, and what shall I say? What shall I say? I mean, what, what would be the conclusion of the matter? Uh, Father, save me from this hour, because, uh, but for this cause came I into this hour. Save me from, should, should I ha be asking the Lord that, that all life should be well and it should be easy? Uh, we would like this sometimes, wouldn't we? We would like for it to be well and that it would be easy. And that, that there would be no difficulties. But we also see that in the times of our life, whenever uh, things get hard, when things get difficult, uh, who do we reach out to at that time? Who do we reach out to? We reach to the Lord. That's when we draw closest to Him. You know, and who's to say and who's to know? And, and I can answer that for you also. Our Heavenly Father, who's to say? And He is the one that who is to know. But who's to say and to know that at these moments and times in your life, the lives that you're going to impact. The people that you're going to come in contact with. And it may also be some of those ones that are tears in this life. Those that are, are sometimes maybe bringing damage to you. And I, I remember sitting out, out in front of that young man's house last night. And he kind of got a little embarrassed because I mean, it was his grandparents' house. But we were sitting there. And I tell you, it looked like there was getting ready to be some one big old party at that house. I mean, we sat there and cars kept on pulling up and... Parking in the driveway, parking on the roadside. He said, it's just my family. It's just my family. I said, I know it looks like there's a big party going on here, but it's just my family. And I said, buddy, it don't matter to me. Whatever's going on is between them and the house. But, but we don't, we, we, sometimes we look at things and we don't know what some people are going through, what they're dealing with, what they're having in their life, what, what they're, how they're having to deal with people in their life. We don't know and how that we can be an influence how Jesus was an influence, wasn't he? He was an influence to those and every one of those that he came around. Uh, believe me, there was times that I'm sure that he had light conversations with people. I'm sure that there was times that he conversed about the government and different things that was going on in the world. But you know what? He knew exactly what was going on, and he knew exactly how that it would be to, to be able to tell them that the answers that they needed to hear. He knew how to, to bring it in the truth 
into their life. He was the truth, but he knew how to, to let them know what they needed in their life. And my friends, if we'll just look at it and see how God will orchestrate our conversations and help us to see what it is that we need to tell people in our life. I know our, our family are the hardest ones to talk to, aren't they? They are the hardest ones to reach. They're the ones that, guess what, they've heard you a few times, and guess what, they don't want to hear you anymore. They don't, they don't want to hear you anymore. They, they get tired of it. But you know what? There's times that are coming that they're going to want to hear something from you. There are those other great fields of wheat, of people out of this world that are coming by your family's way. And, and we, we want them to be uh, as exactly what they need to be. We want them to be ready to tell them exactly what they need to hear. And hopefully that it would spark something in their ear. Something in their heart that it would change them in a way that they would seek out and find our Savior today. And my friends, believe me, there's people all over this world that are thinking about you. As, as, as we, as in our Sunday school lesson today, as Jesus prayed for us, my friend, as he prayed for you. We surely, we, we can do the same thing. Pray for those that are being in the, sent to the way of those that are, are, uh, are having a hard time reaching him. Because, my friend, at one time you had a hard time reaching him. Because your, your business was about yourself. You were concerned about yourself. You were worried about what you needed or either that or, or you was worried about what had happened. Well, there's, a, there's a lot of people that are, 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 are felt back because and have become tears again and, and because of things that have hurt them, because of people that have hurt them, because of church members that have hurt them. And I'll tell you, I, that's the truth, isn't it? Because sometimes that we, we speak a little bit more than what maybe we should. We've said things that are hurtful, things that are harmful, and it can cause people to fall. It can cause people to be hurt. That is where that we better be very, better be very cautious and what it is and how that we are out here in this world. Because people will see you. People will watch you. People will know who you, that you are. People will tell you. know, I believe the Bible tells us what proceeds out of the mouth of men. It's not what goes in to, be, to the belly of what defiles man, is it? But it's what comes out of their mouth. And what comes out of their mouth is what lies in their heart. So eventually, my friends, no matter how well and how Perfect that a, a terror may try to make itself. The truth is going to come forth. The truth is going to come forth. That's what happens in churches today, my friends. People that don't really receive that, that conversion. People that don't really receive that conversion. Or that they've been hurt by somebody. Or that they've, they've been talked bad against. And they've been damaged. They are hurt. And you know what? Who's going to do any good about that? It can only be the wheat. Those that are being led by the Spirit of God. The tares aren't being led by the Spirit of God. Those that are led by that is the one that is seeking to do evil, seeking to do destruction. And, and how do we how do we define it? How do we how do we depict as we look out, as we as we watch? We can't. Who is the wheat and who is the tear? The Bible tells us it's not for us to, to, to do right now. My friends, guess what? Our lives will bear it out. Our lives will bear it out. Who that we truly are. <clears throat> if we're a child of the Lord, are we going to make mistakes? Yeah. If, if you don't, then, well, I don't know who you are, because there ain't no way that's possible. Because <laughs> you're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all at times, maybe, or even apt to, when we get in those moments, <clears throat> they say something that we wish that we could just pull right back. So, sometimes we just can't pull right back, but you know what sometimes we have to do? You know, it's, 
It's easy, it really is, to go to the Lord and ask His forgiveness. It really is. That, that, that's pretty easy to do. It really is to get on our knees and know that we've done something wrong and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Because we know that He's there and we know that He's going to forgive us. We know that He's going to listen, He's going to hear, and we're going to be well. But you know what? Also, you know what? Also, sometimes it has to be done. Here's the hard part. Sometimes we have to go to people. We have to ask their forgiveness. That's not quite so easy. Because you know what? People aren't always quite so forgiving. They're not. But that doesn't mean that, that we still are not supposed to go do that. If we are convicted of something, if we know that at some time or another in our life, that the Lord has shown us that we did something that was wrong, that it needs to be repented of, and that it needs to be changed. I, I remember that there were some things that I did back in my life whenever, you know, when guy was guy, and uh, couldn't, didn't know what he was, you know, if he's going to stay in church or if he's going to go out of church. But I remember at times whenever I would uh, get out of church and I would do a few things, and it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. And, uh, and the Lord would, would forgive me. But then <laughs> he didn't fall short to remind me, uh, you need to go do something about this. It's good that you come to me and ask me for forgiveness. And you're forgiven. But you know what? you got something you have to go do. you got to either go talk to somebody. you got to go tell somebody. you got to go make something that you made wrong. You need to go do your very best to make it right. And whether they knew that or whether they didn't know that, whoever it was that I was to go talk to, it had no bearing on that whatsoever. None. No bearing at all. You might want to justify that thing. Well, it don't matter. All they're going to say is blah, blah, blah. They're going to, you know, make that. It don't matter. The Lord says you need to go do your best to clear this up. You're going to have to do it. I think that you may want to go away. And you may even try to make it go away. You may even try to justify it. You may try to, to, to say that it's okay. Uh, uh, I ask the Lord to forgive me, and that's as far as it needs to go. But the Lord says it needs to go farther. You better go do it. Because you're going to, you're the one that's going to suffer. Like I said, they may have done forgot about it. I, I've went and told people before something that I've done against them, and, and they, they say, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. You know, I remember that. The Lord knew that. And he said, you need to go do something about it. And it's not always easy. Because you know what? That is a very humbling experience. If you go at it with the right heart. If you go at it with the right way. Hey, my friend, we, we've, got, we've got such great opportunity to, to be blessed in the Lord. The wheat's going to be blessed. And I tell you, if, if there are tares here, he was in this service today, maybe something come by your heart and, and blessed you a little bit. You, you were blessed because the, the wheat was being blessed, because of, of the Lord's Spirit was here. But you know what? Why not be like that young man that we talked with last night and say, man, I tell you, whenever I got saved, it was the greatest thing in my life. Everything lifted off of me. All that heaviness, all that weight. All that guilt, all that sin was lifted off of me. And I tell you, that's, that's a conversion experience right there. To be born again by the Spirit of God. What, what more would you want in this life? I tell you, if you're going to love your own life, then the outcome is not going to be well for you. But you got to got to hate this life. <clears throat> and not in the way that it sounds. But hate the sin. Hate the the evil. And do all that you can to stay away from it. <clears throat> Today there's there's wheat and there's tares. They're everywhere. And they're all living together. But as the Bible tells us, there's a day coming very soon that he's going to say, go gather up 
the tares, bind them together, and then throw them into the fire to be burned. He doesn't use that in a parable in a way that, uh, so that it confuses you or that it doesn't make sense. It makes perfectly good sense. If you're ready to meet the Lord, all things will be well. If you don't know the Lord, if you're not a Christian today, if you don't know him as your personal Savior, if you don't know him today, you're going to be bound just as the tares. And you're going to be thrown into the fire. Will they be weeping and welling and gnashing the teeth for an eternity, forever, forever? That's the sad part. That's the horrible part. But the good part is, is that if you're bringing honor to the Lord, if you're doing what He asks you to do, that is very key, my friend. That is very key in, in being a Christian. Doing what the Lord bids you to do. Then He's going to gather us us all. Gather us also up together. And we'll be with him forever. It doesn't seem like much of a choice, does it? It seems like kind of a gimmick, really. Let me see. Uh, I can go and be with him in heaven forever, or I'm going to be tossed into a lake that's burned with fire and brimstone and burn forever. Seems like a pretty easy one to figure out to me. Well, and it is just that easy, my friend, if you'll let it to me. If the Lord's dealing with you today, would you come and just lay everything down at his feet? Pick up your cross and follow him and, and live a glorious life that brings honor to him. And then one of these days, it'll be worth it all. Song leader, give us a song. Personally, not just that you've heard of him, but you know him personally. If you don't, 